Hello everyone and welcome back to the Star Wars Archives. As it's Wednesday once again, we're back this week with another Bad Batch episode and a breakdown and review. This episode was super, super intense at most parts. And I mean, it's what you can expect when it comes to being two episodes off the end of the season. But I'm going to get straight into the breakdown today. If you do enjoy anything Bad Batch or anything Star Wars at all, then be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And let's get straight into the breakdown. As what seems to be per usual with these season three episodes, we start off on Tantus once again. And the music and the setting, it just shows how, I don't know, just how ominous the place is, really. It's just all very unsettling. But we do get to see our first look as Omega, as, well, she's a prisoner once again. And we get to see her meet and interact with the other prisoners. But we quickly catch up with the rest of the members of the Bad Batch, who are on the Borovayo cloning facility, which were the Kamini Owens cloning facility, which we saw earlier on in the season. Or in the show, should I say. And finally, finally, we get to see Echo. I mean... I love the Bad Batch and I really enjoy it, but I think for one of the things that I mostly dislike about it is how in the latter part of season two and season three, Echo has been completely sidelined. We've only seen him twice this season from my memory, but I mean, he was very involved in this episode and hopefully it stays that way for the final two. But obviously as the Marauder got destroyed a couple weeks ago on the Bad Batch, Echo arrives with a new ship and it's actually a stolen shuttle. Once aboard the shuttle, Rampart explains how they actually need to get to Tantus. And this is where the stolen shuttle comes into play. Because they actually need to go to the orbit above Coruscant to go to a space station there. Once aboard the space station, they can get transferred the coordinates for Tantus. And obviously they say that they can't just walk onto the space station and expect to get them. So they actually have Rampart impersonating an Imperial captain. Which is obviously very easy for him because he used to be an Admiral. And we actually see some disdain that the outfit is a captain because he obviously has his standards. We then shift back to Mount Tantus once again with Omega. She actually manages to steal some kind of tool, like a screwdriver, off Dr. Carr, which she obviously uses intending to escape. After this, she goes to the other prisoners and tries to gather some details on the routines of the droids, as well as the doctors who come round. This is where she lets the rest of the Force-sensitive children know that she's planning to escape, and she actually has a way to do it because she's escaped before. But to do this, she needs to go inside the kind of tunnel slash vents that the medical droids use. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out in the finale, because obviously Omega is trying to escape while she's already in the installation. But the Batch are now on their way to Omega to try break her out. But we go back to the Batch once again, as they've arrived at the Coruscant installation. And, well, you can just see Rampart blending in. He's found it very easy to slip back into his old ways almost. And he's definitely enjoying it. He definitely likes that sort of power and commanding people underneath him. He manages to take the batch all the way to the control center. But once they're there, they actually find out some bad news and it's that the shuttles get transferred their codes after they actually leave the station, meaning they can't sneak onto a shuttle, go to its navic computer and copy the coordinates. After finding out this, they decide that Echo needs to sneak onto the shuttle, disable their sensors so the batch can attach their ship underneath and then follow them through hyperspace. Now, I'm not sure why they didn't just throw a tracker on the back of the ship like Obi-Wan did to Jango Fett in Attack of the Clones. I mean, they might have just not had one on them, or perhaps they would have picked it up on the sensors or something like that. But either way, Echo leaves off to go sneak onto this ship. Back on Tantus, we can see one of the scientists has actually sees that Omega's looking very suspicious down in her cell, and she goes down to check it out. And Omega's obviously breaking into the wall behind the panels to try to get to these tunnels. But by the time the scientist gets down there, Omega's basically stopped doing anything suspicious. She's stopped trying to break out, and she just sits there, not doing anything wrong at all, so the scientist leaves. And then now, right at the end of the episode, we see Echo actually manages to sneak onto the ship through one of the droid shoots, which I think is quite funny because I believe in season one, Echo actually complained that, that people thought he was a droid due to his arm and the rest of his armor. And now we see him actually having to blend in with the droids to sneak onto the ship. And once on the ship, he actually manages to turn off the scanner. And then at the most intense part of the episode and one of the most intense parts of the season so far, the Batch have got a last minute attempt to try to attach their ship to the medical frigate. And it comes right down to the wire and they manage to just do it right as the ship goes into hyperspace. And yeah, that's where we end with this week's episode. I really enjoyed this week's episode and it's got us set up right to the point where there's nowhere else we can go other than Tantus now. The next episode is going to be the Batch arriving on Tantus. And I'm nervous for what's going to happen because I don't think everyone's going to make it out alive. But I mean, how can you not still be excited for the finale of the show at the same time? I think it's going to be like a two-part finale. They're, they are releasing on different weeks and we're going to have a gap in between. But I do feel like it's going to feel like one big long episode. Hopefully we have action, surprises, some sadness. And by the end of it, some conclusions to a lot of plot lines that we've been dealing with perhaps even to do with ones in the future such like the cloning of palpatine and we'll find out how it ends up being only rex wolf and gregor left by the time of rebels 
where Omega goes and the fate of the rest of the members of the Bad Batch. But either way, make sure you stay subscribed to see all my breakdowns for the episodes and all the content that I'll put out in between. So be sure to leave a like and check out some of the shorts I've been posting on my channel. And may the force be with you. Always.